So hello, everybody, and welcome back to another academic session during our virtual open house here on November 30th. Right now, I'm joined with Marsha Seville, who is uh, the coordinator for the Medical Professional Stream, which is a program that operates within a lot of Trent University programs that's dedicated to help students achieve a career within the medical profession. So when we're traveling, uh, when we're on the road, when we're speaking to students like yourself in, in your countries or at your schools, um, we get a lot of questions about this program. So I wanted to invite Marsha to tell us a little bit more about the program. So please take it away, Marsha. Thank you, David. So thank you for joining me here today. And as David mentioned, I'm Marsha, and thank you for your interest in the medical professional stream. So just for a brief, brief overview of the medical professional stream, and for most part, I will be calling it the MPS. Uh, so the, it is a unique four-year non-academic support program, or I should say a program that provides co-curricular and extracurricular support for students interested in pursuing professional medical programs. Students are enrolled in the medical professional stream while they're simultaneously in an undergraduate degree program of their choice. Uh, so students take courses for the degree program that they're enrolled in because there are no course, courses as part of the uh, medical professional stream. Academic credit is therefore not obtained for enrollment and enrollment in the medical professional stream is not required to obtain an undergraduate degree. So we have students in the medical professional stream interested in pursuing not only medicine, but several professional programs of interest. We have students interested in things like dentistry, becoming a veterinarian. We have um, students who want to pursue optometry, occupational therapy, uh, students who want to further their studies and do medical research, students who want to do, be physician assistants, and so many other, other professional programs, um, medical programs. And so we have a lovely community of like-minded students who have that goal in mind and they're able to meet, talk and assemble and share um, what they want to do in the future. So it is a four-year program and the medical professional stream is intended to run throughout a student's undergraduate years at Trent. So there are diff different things that we do in years one, years two, years three, years four in providing support for students. I have a few listed here, and this is a non-exhaustive list, and I'm not going to go through everything, but first of all, if you look at something like in year one, year one students get advising in terms of their foundation courses, for things like a medical, for medical school foundation courses that are, are relevant to the MCAT. The MCAT is a standardized examination that many students who are planning to pursue medicine, for example, would have to take. Um, students get support for other exams like the OAT for students looking to go for optometry and so on. And then students get support in signing up for extracurricular co-curricular opportunities. They get their first aid training last week. Um, students just finished a round of first aid and CPR training. And then we teach them how to create a portfolio that they will need later on when they're ready to apply to various professional medical programs. So you have this, for example, as some, just as a snapshot of what happens in year one. And I tell students all the time, start getting to know your professors, starting, start building that relationship with them so that later on, by the time they get to year, end of year three and starting year four, when they're ready to apply to various professional medical programs, the professors would have known them. Other highlights during that time, support for things like research through the community-based research um, here available the Trent Community Research Center. Um, and also things like strategy sessions for some of those standardized tests like the MCAT, and among other things that students would need to, would get support for throughout this process. 
So you may be wondering why non-academic support? While medical schools place a large emphasis on academic requirements, there's also the non-academic requirements are also equally important. And I just took a little quote here from one university here in Ontario, and they said that students should demonstrate excellence in non-academic areas such as community involvement, reliability, responsibility, perseverance, creativity, and leadership. And that is where the support in the MPS comes in when we help support students with extracurricular, access to research, volunteer activities, um, accessing employment activities, and just all those components that come together to help students create a very attractive and a very good um, autobiographical sketch. And also we help students get experiences that will help prepare them for their interviews. Um, for example, last evening, we had a session on the multiple mini interview. It is a format, an interview format that we're seeing getting more and more popular for students who are going to different professional medical programs. So these are some of the ways in which um, non-academic support becomes valuable. So what are specifically some of those supports that we give to students? And I have a picture of here of some of the MPS students there who are part of the Trent University Emergency First Response Team. Um, so students in that program, a lot of them are involved with two first, as we would call that team, and they provide first response here on campus. Students in the medical professional stream, they get advising specific to medical and other professional medical programs. And I mentioned like getting, getting um, support in terms of accessing volunteer activities. They get experiential learning support. For example, for one of our partnerships, students from the medical professional stream have been taking part in a competitive um, mini clerkship where they travel to Georgia, USA and get experience in what happens at a teaching hospital for medical school. Uh, so students get MCAT and other strategy sessions. Students get help with autobiographical sketch building, first aid and CPR training, like I mentioned earlier. And if you see the picture here on my right, it is um, it is a picture of students in a suture clinic that was organized here at Trent. So the students were learning how to do some suturing and just having a really nice practice session there. Students get access to different types of training, for example, mental health, first aid, and other information sessions. Last week, Friday, we had representatives from one organization come to talk to students about participation in medical mission trips, for example. So you find students with so interested in, you know, the potential of traveling to Latin America on one of those mission trips. We have also medical schools from Canada, the Caribbean, UK, elsewhere, also having information sessions for students because a lot of students are interested in not only studying medicine in Canada, but some of them may be interested in studying medicine and other professional programs outside of Canada. So we bring in all those um, different schools so students can have an idea of what happens there as well. We bring in, inform we have information sessions where we bring in, you know, various specialists or medical professionals. We had in our life after trend session, we had a pharmacist, we had an occupational therapist, we had a chiropractor. So students are able to have an idea of what is involved in those different occupations. And we're working right now with a cardiologist so that we can schedule a session. And I know in, a, in the past, this was a session that students really, really enjoyed and they felt they benefited a lot from. Now at the end, in year four, right before graduation, it culminates with a pinning ceremony. So students in the, we have Olivia and another student um, in the MPS, they received pins at the end 
of their time in the MPS. And it's just a wonderful like gift to show that they were part of this really great community and um, and something they can always have with them. Now, so far in tracking our MPS grads, we've realized that the 97% um, that we have been able to track are currently pursuing further education. And we're still working on a project where we're reaching out to, to, the, to the rest to find out where they are. And we're a small, or should I say, a young program. And we've graduated just our second set of MPS students. So where have we found our grads? Most of them are in Canada. Uh, some of them are pursuing de medicine, dentistry, medical research, chiropractic medicine, and occupational therapy. Then we have some in the UK pursuing medicine, Ireland pursuing dentistry, in the US optometry, and in the Caribbean pursuing veterinary medicine and medicine. And I mentioned the Caribbean. So we, the medical professional stream has a, um, through Trent, a memorandum of understanding agreement with three medical schools in the Caribbean. One of these medical schools is St. George's University School of Medicine, and it is located in Grenada. Students who apply to St. George's it's part of the four plus four model, four years in your undergraduate degree at Trent and four years with St. George's. Two of those years, well, you can spend one year at St. Well, at St. George's in the UK, Northumbria. The second year in St. George's, you can choose to sp spend the first two years in St. George's in Grenada. And the final two, mostly in the US, um, before students get to do their residencies. With Trinity School of Medicine, students spend two years in St. Vincent in the Caribbean and two years in the US. With University of Medicine and Health Sciences, students spend two years in St. Kitts and two years in the US. And of course, like I mentioned, after that, after those four years at the Caribbean medical schools, students get to pursue their residencies up in, either in Canada or the US. And in the case of St. George's, they also have the option, I think, of going to the UK. Um, and I should mention here that the schools that we partner with in the Caribbean are accredited by accrediting bodies recognized by the World Federation of Medical Education. And this is very important, especially moving forward when students particularly want to do their residencies in the UK, sorry, in the US or in Canada. So St. George's, just to give you a, just a brief overview of the campus, this is what it looks like. Um, students in the MPS automatically receive a $20,000 entrance scholarship and they no longer require students to write the MCAT. It's Trinity School of Medicine, it's in St. Vincent. Uh, students through that program get to go on that mini clerkship in Georgia, USA, and the MCAT is no longer required. Required. We have University of Medical and Health Science, Medicine and Health Sciences. It's located in St. Kitts and it requires the MCAT, um, but also has students can do their clinical rotations in Canada, US, and Puerto Rico. Now, for students to be part of the MPS, what are some of the admission requirements? Students usually need to have 80% average on their best. Um, um, grade 12 courses, and students would also require 60% in English. The MPS can be combined with any degree except nursing. So nursing, why not nursing? Because nursing is already a professional medical program, and we offer that program at Trent, so we do not need to prepare students to get into that program. 
students can go directly into that program. And if you are interested in the medical professional stream, um, you can apply directly to the MPS or medical professional stream on OUAC, which is the Ontario University's Application Center. And you can declare your major, meaning your main undergraduate program in year one while you're enrolled in the program. So you can determine whether you want to do your biology or your kinesiology, not your kinesiology, your biology or your chemistry and so on. However, there's an exception. Students who wish to major in biomedical science, conservation biology, forensic science or kinesiology, those CAPT programs, students need to apply to those programs directly. And if they're all, if you're also interested in applying to the medical professional stream, you send an email to admissions at trentu.ca and you let admissions know that you're also interested in applying to the medical professional stream and admissions will add this application manually for you. So yes, if you would, if you have more questions, you can reach out to me anytime at MPS at trentu.ca. Also, you can um, take a look at what information is on our website, or here is my phone number as well, where I can be reached. Thank you so much for your interest in, to, in the medical professional stream, and look forward to hearing from some of you. Oh, thank you very much, Marcia. That was so good. We, we get so many questions from students um, that are interested in medical professions or becoming a doctor in particular. And, you know, the conversations always start with, how can I become a doctor? And, you know, we, we typically have to explain the process in Canada because the process in Canada is very, very different than the process in other parts of the world. We can talk a little bit more, more about that in a few minutes, but... Um, I think some students don't necessarily fully grasp the amount of professions that exist within the medical field. I mean, medicine is a massive, massive industry, and there's lots of different support roles. There's lots of different frontline work that students can be doing or can, you know, prepare for these future careers that they don't necessarily know about, but might be very, very interesting and interested in. I just had a, a question about maybe some of the types of clubs that the students might have access to. I was, I actually didn't know that the the two for the the Trent University first emergency responder or is a first first responder. Trent University emergency first response team. Yeah, I, I didn't know that that ran it in collaboration with the with the medical professional stream. I was wondering if the students have any other opportunities to get involved in that type of activity, because as you mentioned, if they're applying to medical school or additional schooling after, they typically have to demonstrate that they are involved outside of the classroom. Yeah, so the 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 two for it or Trent University emergency first response team is not run in collaboration with the MPS, but quite a few of the sure. students in the medical professional stream, they, they're able to get in during tryouts. So yeah. I have so many students there who are part of that, um, of TUFRIT, and that's one of the ways they can get involved. A lot of them have had first aid training, so that gives them uh, like it puts them a step ahead of others because you know first aid training is is quite expensive and students are able to get that as part of the medical professional stream. Um, another club at Trent where we have quite a few students involved in it is the Trent um, Pre Med Society. There are lots of MPS students who are members of the Pre Med Society including one of the co-presidents. So, you know, quite a few of our students are involved in that club. Um, yes, and these are just some of those that students, these are the two of the ones that the students are, are very involved in. We also have a club called Active Minds, and Active Minds is a, a, a club that provides support for mental health-related issues. And um, the president is an MPS student, and you have other MPS students who are very involved in that club. So you find that there are opportunities to get involved on campus for sure. And 
that type of involvement looks really good for an application for medical programs. They want to see that students are genuinely interested in that field, as well as seeing how students are able to handle being at school as well as being involved in other activities during that time. And I guess it shows that students can work in high pressure environments, find time to do well, as well as still do things that they enjoy. Yeah, yeah, wow, that's great. So lots of opportunities for students to kind of strengthen their resume when the time comes for them to apply to additional schooling. Um, I had a little bit of a question. You did such a good job at explaining some of the experiential education or the hands-on learning that students have the opportunity to do. I'm wondering if you can think of maybe any other ones or elaborate on some of the, the ones that you have mentioned or the type of facilities that the students will have access to either through this program that they're accessing now or through the program that they're uh, you know, in right now. So if they're taking biology, what type of environment do they have to help them get some of that hands-on experience? Like, for example, that suture um, workshop, that's fascinating. I, I, it's such a cool thing that students, I never really necessarily thought of, but it's a really good practical skill that you can teach sort of outside of the classroom or inside of the classroom, depending on your particular program. Yes, students in the in the medical professional stream, they're always looking for experiential learning opportunities. And I must, when talking about the suturing clinic, uh, what I forgot to mention was earlier was that it was going that, that last one was going to be held, or it was held on a day that Trent was closing down at four because <laughs> of um, um inclement weather, right? Okay. So. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're starting at three and Trent's going to close at four. Maybe nobody will show up. But we had a classroom full of students because they were so excited about that suturing clinic. Um, so it was it was nice to watch them. They had an instructor who was experienced with that, like somebody who has some healthcare experience. And that person was helping to lead that session. And it was just amazing to watch them you know, put their suturing skills to practice and just learn um, what is involved in that process. And here, they have a few suturing kits here that they can use to practice as part of the MPS Resource Center we're building. Um, we have books for them and they have suturing kits where they can practice some of those skills as well. So, so there's going to be a whole resource area for these students? Yeah, we've started to grow or we've started a resource area or we call it a resource center with the help of one of the MPS students leading that project. And these are things that the MPS students do. They lead projects for the MPS as well. They volunteer to do that. Um, so one of our students, Michaela, was working on that little project. And um, as part of that, we ordered a few suturing kits that students are able to use to practice. Uh, we've ordered books and so on as part of that resource center. So in, um, to add to what you asked as well, in terms of the experiential learning, uh, I mentioned that mini clerkship, and it was it's a competitive process. And we have a few students who have participated in, in, in that, where they travel to Georgia, say, for four, about four days, and they take part in, um, you know, they they meet other students from Canada, they meet other students who are pursuing medicine, and they're also, they get some hands-on activity on what is involved in, in putting in an IV, for example, and an IV therapy clinics are something that we're planning to have as well with one of our partner institutions. This is something that we mentioned doing with the students. So students are able to participate in, in, in things like that. We're working with other institutions to try to offer other experiential learning for our students um, and working closely with the Trend Community Research Center as well to see whether students can get or uh, to help students get access to community-based research uh, at, while at Trent. So yeah, so these are just a few ways in which students are getting that, that type of support.
Yeah, that's amazing. And and that's the type that they're looking for and need that definitely to enter the workforce ready. But I think that's it for questions today. If you have any extra comments that you wanted to, to throw in, now would be the time to do it. But um, I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, really, this is a, a program that's of great interest to students, and I think they're going to get some really good um, information from the session. And of course, they can contact us at any time. We have lots of people standing by right now to answer their questions um, in their language, ready to go uh, in the breakout rooms today. So thank you so much again, Marsha. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you for having me, David. <laughs>